Tri-Cities Community Television was at the Plasta Arts in Coquitlam for a chance to sit down and talk with the internationally renowned and regional First Nations artist Mike D'Angeli, who was a guest presenter as part of the season's Salon Speaker Series in Coquitlam. The Plasta Arts Salon Speaker Series provides the local community an opportunity to meet and engage with compelling, renowned and rising BC artists. The event was a fun evening for all in attendance. We had the opportunity to talk with Mike just prior to his salon presentation. Wa sim gigat sigam hanak kubu wuxen. Got some milk at a teeth clean at a Mike D'Angelo de Wayu. Gingola to a watku. Zimil di bedeku. Vancouver de Wal Zagan. Doexism ko salish negetku. Doexism tanis newsome. Well, I'm, I'm Nishka Klinkit and Simshian as well. So, and I don't, um, with that, I, I recognize all three because my family have worked hard to create those connections. Uh, just like creating connections, being it with songs and, and ceremonial wealth, I, I still continue to honor that. Um, with demonstrating our art and carving, I've had the awesome privilege of being able to do that all over the world. Germany, Austria, Malaysia, Japan, just to name a few places. And everywhere from Florida to Alaska and all over Canada. Um, so for, for myself, it's, it's always, uh, it always presents itself different challenges, but I absolutely love it. And so when it comes time to share the art, it's not just the art. Uh, I share, like I said, with the, some of the language, some of our songs, uh, our Adalek, our oral history. So it's all kind of wrapped into s so much because our art isn't just necessarily art. It's actually our written form of language. Yeah. And so um, I use this to continue telling our ancient and traditional stories, but also our contemporary uh, understanding of where we fit within the cosmology of human beings. So I call myself a traditionally contemporary artist. I've done the art all my life, and it was more out of, out of my grandmother and my mother when, when they started our family's dance group, pushing us to create our own regalia. And I don't say clothing because clothing denotes that we're dressing up in, into something that we are not. Uh, our regalia is, is our finest clothing. Um, and so that was my grandmother and my mother's rule is we had to make it. So to make it, we had to understand, you know, the, the concepts around the art. And it's kind of grown from there. Um, I was spent 10 years as a U.S. Army Airborne Ranger. I joined the Army at 17. Uh, bounced around the world, kind of did the art while I was, you know, overseas and in my different stations I was in. Um, but I, when I went to school, I went to the University of Alaska and then down to Washington. Uh, and I studied history. I wanted to be a history teacher. Um, and then some things uh, changed and I, I decided to move home. And uh, with the art, it's kind of, uh, I see it as a, a continuation of studying history. And so definitely with that. And then of course, I, I, uh, my studio is at the Vancouver Aboriginal Friendship Center and I'm in the basement. And so uh, nobody, knows. nobody knows, no windows and, uh, and I enjoy it. But I'm also able to blast, you know, I, I, I listen to every kind of genre of music. And uh, depending on what I'm working on, sometimes I'm dancing around my studio, even listening to some rock and roll. And, uh, you know, enjoying that, especially when you're working on a, a large project like a totem pole where you're crawling over it and, and having to measure things out and, and a very physical work. Uh, it's nice to be able to, to dance around it. But uh, even traditionally, we'll have moments. We were getting ready for a couple of big, big events this last uh, fall and winter, I mean, last winter. And uh, we were learning new songs. And so we had the songs constantly playing on our, on our iPods. And uh, so we're dancing around and working through, through that as well as creating um, our nok 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 nok, meaning our, our masks and, and uh, other ceremonial beings. You know, when I, did a, um, when I do my totem poles, I definitely have to look for the logs. Um, I did a 30 foot ocean going canoe and I definitely had to hunt around for that log. And the reason for that is because our, our logs, Western old growth Western red cedar, are unfortunately going the way of the dodo bird. Um, they're, they're becoming extinct and harder to find, uh, which means they're, they're becoming more and more expensive. And the reason for that is just over, over logging and deforestation. Um, and it's really sad. And, and of course, finding the right log, we grew in, they grew in heavy canopied forests. And you know, for cutting down the trees, they grow faster, yes, and they're big, beautiful cedars, but they have so many more knots. And, and uh, if you were to look at the grain underneath, it looks like a cork in between the, between the grain. And as old growth, any old growth is anywhere from 500 years or older, uh, that grain is, those grains and those rings are closer. And then the new growth are farther apart. And so it makes it really tough for carving. I do have one mask that I brought with me that is carved out of new growth. It was given to me during that big storm that we had uh, and some trees blew down in Stanley Park. And oh. some of my, um, my Coast Salish friends gave me a, a chunk of wood that was gifted to them. 
Uh, I, I don't agree with, with uh, appropriation at all. Uh, but what I do, with it, do agree with is understanding. And if, if we are able to understand and talk tools and carving, because wood is so universal. When I was in Germany, uh, I, ha I was able to talk with so many different carvers and, and get techniques that help me with mine, right. with, with my art, and vice versa. Uh, but we weren't going, and I wasn't doing German art, and they weren't doing First Nations art. Uh, same thing in Japan. There were um, 16 different countries I was asked to represent Canada International Carving Expo. And uh, I, when I got there, I didn't understand very much Japanese and, and uh, was told I had uh, 11 days or 12 days to finish up a project. And I, and I completed a, a seven foot totem pole or eight foot totem pole in 11 days. One gold for Canada. Uh, but I learned some amazing techniques from, from the Japanese and other countries that were attending this program. Uh, I used a wonderful tool called a Lancelot, which is basically a chainsaw and a grinder. And you got to watch your fingers on that one. Uh, but, you know, it's been amazing to be able to talk, talk wood and talk art and tools with people. And I agree with that. Um, but I don't think they, uh, I just, I, I don't think it's appropriate to, for non-First Nations because, like I said before, it's our language. It's, a, it's, it's much deeper. It's our language. It's also our culture. And there's a historical and connection that we have that we have to be trained to understand these things. I can't go and just say I want to carve this and or a beaver with an unbroken stick because I want to. I have to understand whose crest that belongs to uh, and understand that there, there's a deeper meaning behind it than, than just something pretty. Um, so I hope people understand that and, and I'm very straightforward when it comes to that. I don't teach non-First Nations. Uh, I'll have discussions with them and, and talk like I am doing this evening. Uh, but I, as far as educating uh, the public, that's as far as I take it. This one I did with um, my students at St. Thomas Aquinas. I've been working with them for the whole school year. We're doing a large project and I was teaching them how to do washes and how to, how to paint and step out of um, constraints of red and black. Because if people think West Coast art, they think Native art, it needs to be red and black. So this particular piece is playing with color and, and, and shape. The awesome thing about this is when you're painting it, you start seeing it in three-dimensional because it, the color plays with your eyes. And this is actually a mask that we use in our dance group, uh, a love song between Mike Yell and I. But as I was saying about the, the Nuk Nuk pieces and about the, uh, the mask, I no longer carve out the eyes, the nostrils, or the mouth for, for it to be hung on a wall. For me, that's giving away too much of our own power. We use this one in our dance group. And I don't normally put our, our dancing masks on display. Um, but I wanted to share some of the pieces that I had with you, and this is a particular piece that I'm absolutely in love with still. Um, I talked about the Bentwood box uh, being like my, the, this one was gifted to my wife at our wedding potlatch, and I gifted one that looked exactly like it to her mother. Um, here's a type of ridicule mask that I did for uh, a show in California. And again, I told you, I shared with you guys what ridicule masks mean. But this particular one, I, I had fun with color and using magenta and yellows that uh, you don't normally see with northern style art. And again, uh, challenging our, my viewers that just because it's uh, not what you think as traditional colors doesn't make it not traditional. So the one thing I really hope that ever, everybody understands is that our art is growing and changing constantly just like us as human beings. So um, being able to... Um, to push things beyond uh, our comfort zones, but also uh, expanding and doing new, using new technologies. I was just in Alaska, uh, in one of my wife's village of Metlakatla, Alaska, and I'm watching these kids using computers to uh, bend and, and twist the art to fill in these spaces, uh, that, and something that's two-dimensional into something that's three-dimensional. It's been amazing to watch that. I wish they had that when I was in school. I felt like I would've been a lot further along than I am now as an artist. Um, because I can see something, I can see a wall, and I can totally see that designed up or carved or what have you, I can see it. But to be able to have that uh, ability to create a blueprint with a computer is pretty amazing. So I'm, I'm really inspired by what these young people are doing now in the creation of our art. So I hope that, the one thing I hope people take away is, is that um, we're 21st century people too, and that we, our art is a 21st century art as well. And so to be able to do things in our tradition, but also add the contemporary elements is just as important. It's like having a history book and saying we can't, we got to stop right at 1960. That doesn't make any sense, right. you know. And we need to be able to be in this dialogue and this communication with everybody else about our art and, and about our culture. Oh, hey.